Hi there, welcome to another edition of Yoga with Anne. Today we're doing another yoga short. So for the month of October, I did a heart opener challenge. And I thought I'd do something different, but something for November. And I decided to call this an exploration instead of a challenge. There's nothing wrong with the challenge, right? It's good to have those. But I wonder if sometimes using a word like that might deter people or make them not want to do it or have something, something happen, something go on. So just changing it up, same idea. We're going to explore a pose this month called Supta Padangustasana, recline hand to big toe pose. So like October, the goal was to practice the supported heart opener every day or as often as you could or as often as you remember or maybe three times a week or every other day or whatever it might have been. So same idea here. We're working toward every day. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen. It has to happen. Things happen in our lives. Life happens. Uh, sometimes it's just not appropriate. So find what works best for you. So some, po some props for the pose today, something to support your head. Most of us need something under our heads. So if you don't have a yoga blanket like I do, you can use a bath towel, a beach towel, something that will fold and support your head. Almost everybody could benefit from one. Some of you might not need it, but um, it's nice to have it, especially for most of us when we lie down, we might be tight in our uh, shoulders and our neck. And then because we're gonna be working with the legs, you might find that because your hamstrings are tight or some other part of your leg, that'll actually affect how you lie on the mat, how your head is on your mat or your support. So that's why the support is a really good idea. If you have a yoga strap, have a yoga strap. I realize not everyone has a yoga strap. We can do it without a strap. It's a lot easier to have something that will work as a strap. So if you don't have a yoga strap, a necktie can work, the belt of a bathrobe, a scarf, something like that. I've even uh, I've taught in the past at gyms and people use towels to put over their foot. Now, towels are sh typically short. They're usually like the sweat towels or whatnot, but maybe you have something that will work. So something like that is doable for this pose. If you just don't have anything and you want to use your hands, I can show you that. It's a little bit more difficult to hold it for a period of time, but it is possible. You won't get the maximum benefit of the pose, but it'll still work. So I'm going to come off of my block. That's just how I like to be seated to come into the pose. I'm going to have a sip of water here. So I'll just have my strap nearby. And I'm going to come to lie down in constructive rest. Knees bent, feet on the mat, feet about hip distance apart, and make sure that the support works. So if it's too high up, you know you're going to be more like this. And if it's too low, you might have your chin tilted. So see if you can find it pretty even where you feel fairly comfortable here. So I am going to show you a couple of ways if you have a yoga strap. So I'll show you quickly how to come into it. And then a couple ways if you have a yoga strap with a, um, a D ring or a clasp that you can alter the way the strap is used. So I will have my right knee into my chest. I'll take my strap. I have three places to put the strap, the ball of my foot, the arch at the top of my heel. Usually for people who haven't done this before, arch is easiest because it won't slip as much. But maybe you explore the other spots. I'll work with the arch today. So I have my strap in place and then I'm going to start to reach and lift on up. Now the goal is to have your leg as straight as possible. So if you have your leg really close and you're here, that's not as beneficial, right? So you, that's why the strap is helpful. So it's called recline hand to big toe pose, but look, my arms are short. So I can move my leg away, reach nice and long. So I'm like reaching on up and I'm not just pressing my knee away, right? I'm thinking about like reaching up from, from my um, hip socket up through my thigh, through my shin, my calf muscles. 
out through my heel and the ball of my foot. And then I would imagine that my foot is up on the ceiling and all four corners of my foot are connecting with the surface. So right here is perfectly fine. Some people like to activate the other leg. So I'm gonna pick my toes up, come onto my heel and stretch my leg out. And I keep it active, pressing through all four corners of that foot. Like whatever's in front of me, I'm gonna press my foot into it. I'm standing on it. I'm pressing my thigh down toward the mat. I'm pressing this top thigh away and I'm breathing. So, you know, uh, necktie, belt from a bathrobe works as well. They're not quite as long. Yoga straps come in six foot, eight foot, and 10 foot. This is eight foot and it's pretty doable for me. I don't have very long arms. So I mentioned about not using the strap. So let's come back for a moment. I'll do the other side. So I'll hug my knee in, and then I'm gonna bring my hands behind my thigh. And then I'm gonna start to reach up. So again, not just like pressing the knee straight, right? Reaching, pressing through all four corners, lifting and lengthening. So as you see, I my arms are fairly short, and so I don't have as much space, as much accessibility in this pose, but it's still doable, right? Once we hold this pose, I'm gonna suggest like 10 rounds of your breath, which is gonna be different than mine. For each side, if you decide you like to be here longer, of course you can be here longer. So that's an option if you don't have anything that will work to be your yoga strap. So coming back, I didn't, I didn't uh, do the other leg. That is possible, it's a little more intense as you can see. My leg bends a little more and I am, there's some shaking going on. So, you know, maybe you work toward that. So I'm gonna roll on over. So if you have a strap that has, has the clasp, I'm gonna make a loop. So you can make two different loops. I'm gonna make the first loop, this first round, about shoulder distance from like one shoulder to the other. It's not gonna be exact, it just kind of gives you a starting point. So holding onto the strap can be a lot for my hands, for anyone's hands. If you have arthritis especially or something else going on, gripping onto that strap can be really intense. So I'll hug my right knee in. Make sure that the buckle isn't right where your hand's gonna be. And then I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna place it in the strap so that my palm is facing up toward the ceiling and the back or the top of my hand is facing toward my face and then I'm gonna wrap my fingers around the strap and then I'm gonna straighten my leg reaching to straighten so I'm still holding on but I'm not gripping right so you know some of the students just kind of let it hang I just have my fingers lightly around it so it's less intense you have to make sure that it's set up right so that you know your shoulders not hiked up you want to be pretty even here in the shoulders but this is a good way to do it there's one other way and you have to do this one, you have to set it up appropriately or it's just, it's not gonna be okay. So if this, you know, honor your body, right? Make sure you're safe. So I'm gonna make guests. So this is a hands-free Supta Padangustasana. I call it hammock pose. My hair is very clean, so <laughs> I just washed it today. So we'll see what happens when I do this. Again, make sure the buckle is not going to be anywhere on your head and anywhere on your foot. So that we kind of have it to the side. So I'll do my other, other foot. So I'll come on down. So I'm going to bring this, put this, the buckle kind of to the side. So it's going to come at the base of your skull. So I have to move my hair. So you don't want it on your neck. You don't want it there. So mine's like right on top of my ears. My ears are actually coming over it. And then I'm gonna bring my knee in and I'm gonna lift on up. So you might have to adjust. So it's nice if this is available for you to be able to adjust. So this is a nice balance. You'll see um, basketball players doing this kind of stretch. So this is only gonna work, right? If you have a buckle here, a clasp here, and then hands free. So I'm still lengthening here, 
and it's a nice, it actually feels really good for my neck. If this doesn't seem like a good idea, don't do this. Do with two hands, do the one hand, do the hands at the back of the thigh. You also have to have a strap that's long enough, right? So I mentioned six foot, eight foot, 10 foot. For most of us, six foot is not gonna work. If you're really tall, a 10 foot, tall, long legs. Um, you also have the option of putting two straps together if you happen to have two yoga straps. So again, make sure that's not the back of the neck. And sometimes people try to practice it like this. So we want it to be pretty natural, right? So there is a little bit of lift, natural curve here. I'm gonna release. Make sure the strap doesn't hit you in the face. All right. So I'm gonna undo my loop. And I'll come back to two hands on the strap. So if you're ready, let's set up for our pose. So I'm gonna teach with a strap, but you do what's best for you, starting in constructive rest. And let's just have our hands either on our belly our chest, one hand on the belly, one hand on the chest. So our exploration for this month is, you know, maybe trying to practice this pose every day, every other day, once a week. And it's a pose that you can just practice and be done, right? You do it in the morning, you do it in the evening, in the middle of the day. It helps to really lengthen your legs. It's really nice um, kind of going the opposite of what's sitting is really stretching out your legs, your hip, hips. So I'm gonna hug my right knee in, I'm gonna lasso my foot, and I'm gonna reach and extend. And then I find a good place, you know, and sometimes I kind of wrap my hands around. I can have my elbows down on the mat. You can stay right here, this is totally fine. Make sure that you know you're not so close that you're not feeling any sort of stretch. We do wanna have somewhat of a stretch. And then I'm gonna pick my left foot up, left toes up, and extend through my heel. And notice your breath. Deepen your breath. If your left leg out is out long, bend your knee, bring your foot to your mat, release the strap, bring your right foot back to your mat. And just take a moment between the two sides. I like to say that this pose makes you taller. There's no scientific evidence to that, but it does stretch out your muscles, when I used to teach in person, uh, one time I had chalk in my bag and I marked students' mats from before we did the pose and then after. And um, <laughs> some people grew, one person grew two inches, that was a little too big, and a one person shrunk by two inches. So it's not scientific, but um, anyway, there's that. Let's hug our left knee into our chest. We're gonna lasso our foot. We're gonna reach and extend. That leg on up. Get situated before you decide what's gonna happen with the other leg. So I'm spreading my toes as much as I can. I'm you know, trying to have my foot as even as possible, like I'm standing on my foot. My leg is fairly straight. So you know, maybe you explore different places and space for your leg to be. I'm gonna adjust my hands on my strap so that I'm not overworking my upper body. And then you can choose to pick your right toes up, extend your heel out long, and that foot is totally out of the camera. I'm gonna adjust so that you can still see my foot. Because I think that part is important. And for me, this side is a lot tighter, so I have to adjust a little bit. 
And sometimes your body tells you that you don't want or need to extend that other leg. It can, the foot can stay on the mat. And there's many variations of this pose. We're doing Supta Padan Vishtasana 1 for about 10 rounds of my breath. Deepen your breath. If your right leg is out long, bend your knee, bring your foot to your mat. Let's release the other foot and strap. And then just for a moment, let's extend our legs out long. I don't need to be active, just relaxed. Just notice how you feel. So sometimes when I teach this pose, we do one side and extend both legs and notice. So that's something that you could do as well. Notice how the right leg feels compare to the left and then do the two sides. You might notice a difference. One leg might feel longer than the other. And then let's come back to constructive rest. And just take a couple of moments here. I'm gonna roll over to my side and keep my head low as I press up and come back up into a seated position. And I'm just gonna come back to a seat. I'm gonna sit on my block because that's the most comfortable for me. Sit however is comfortable for you. Let's take a moment to notice how we feel. If anything has shifted or changed. So you're welcome you know, to continue with this video each time you explore this pose. It's pretty simple once you know how to do it, right? Do it on your own, no big deal. Um, I gave a lot of time for setup, so maybe you don't have that time. So this is a pose that really doesn't take very long. Um, once you get going, you know, 10 breaths, if you have time for less, less, if you have time for more, more, but I think 10 rounds of breath is probably a good place to be. We'll bring our hands together at heart center. Keep peace in your mind, keep strength in your body, and keep love in your heart. From my heart to yours, I bow to you. Thank you so much for practicing with me today, for taking on this exploration, whether it's one day in November or all the days of November, if you're doing this another month. I'll have my information below on how you can contact me via email and social media. And you're welcome to give me any requests, any questions, any ideas, any thoughts. I'd love to hear from you. So I hope to practice with you again soon and have a lovely day.